Um, yeah. Carly, hang on there. You might want to listen to Neil Dixon, who's chief executive of the NHS Confederation, who can give us his reaction. Good afternoon, Neil. What what do you make of this uh, change in advice? What would be your advice to Carly, for example? Well, I wouldn't be presumptuous to give her advice, but I, I would say that I think overall these relatively gentle relaxations will be welcomed uh, by, you know, there are more than two million individuals in England whose lives have been very severely restricted in, in recent months. And, and clearly the cost of shielding and indeed the whole cost of lockdown, not just economically, but on individuals, health and relationships and everything else is, is re- will, we will see what the effect is. But of course it is, it is not without, without massive cost. Mm. Um, I think that uh, it's interesting. The, the deputy chief medical officer actually said this afternoon that they, they could actually make relaxations now, but they didn't want to kind of rush ahead with them. And so I think they are, they are being quite cautious and also letting people understand what is likely to be ahead, both in terms of the first one in July 6th and then later the sort of not complete, but, but the relaxation in, in August, which pushes it back to a kind of more normal life for these individuals. The key thing, I think, from our point of view, and it's, it's definitely the NHS's big concern, is are we able to keep these figures going down in this way? And we've only got a We've got a test and trace system in England, which is just up and running. It hasn't got an app. It is starting to work, but it's by no means fully up and running. So the the worry, obviously, is that you'll get into a position where they, there will be outbreaks. And are we going to be able to get on top of them quickly and in time? And I think that is the that's the concern. So it is about individuals uh, obeying the rules, just as we've just heard. There are individuals who don't break the rules and that uh, who break the rules mm-hmm. in terms of social distancing. So it does require everybody or the vast majority of people to obey those rules. Clearly in the community, well, there isn't the level that there was. It is, it is clearly, it's gone down. We know that from the ONS infection survey. But what we don't know is whether, yeah, it drifts back up again or whether, as it has in some American states, or whether, you know, it seems to stay very low in some European countries. Um, I, I, I wonder, Neil, what you made of, we heard Devi Shrida, a very eminent public health expert from Edinburgh, on the programme, arguing that actually, rather than loosing, maybe we should toughen up and actually eliminate this because it's not beyond our capacity to actually just get rid of the virus in this country to all intents and purposes like New Zealand has. But it would take a short term, more work in the short term to have more easing in the long term. Is that is that strategy a good idea, politically difficult at this point, because obviously people are looking forward to getting out for the summer? I think politically it would be very difficult. Uh, um, and and it's not, you should never reject an idea out of hand, should you? <laughs> um, so uh, I, I think the first point is practicality of, of, of testing in that way. Obviously, we have built up numbers of, of tests, but you'd have to test an awful lot of people. In a, and, and, of course, you're talking, A, a much bigger country than New Zealand. And, of course, you're talking about a country that has had and still does have a, a, a a level of virus, as it mm. were, that, that New Zealand has, has not seen. But um, I certainly wouldn't want to. The other point, obviously, is that when you test people who are asymptomatic, you can't, it, it's not reliable. I no, mean, you don't it, know it can spot them. It. Yeah. Exactly. So eliminating would sound, sounds great. I'm not sure you could even persuade the public now to start going backwards. And that, that is going to be an issue. And it's interesting. You mentioned the word pause. And pause has obviously been used deliberately yep. because they're saying we don't don't know if this we can't be absolutely sure so we'll pause it for now but we may have to move backwards and i think we all have to be bear that in mind because what we don't want to do is get back to a situation where we allow the virus uh, to get a grip again and that is still a risk yeah just very briefly carly i hope you're still there just tell yeah, me what I'm you sure. think you're what you think you're going to be doing july um the key date monday july the 6th will you go and sit in the garden with six people do you think um, I don't think my garden's big enough to, <laughs> to distance the six people. But, yeah, I, w- I would sit in the garden with um, with somebody else that I knew yeah. and trusted who was following the guidelines. And I think that would be the key. We need to make risk decisions based on our communities and knowing knowing the people that we're exposing ourselves to are following the yeah, some... the appropriate guidelines. Carly, good luck with it. Carly Pierce and uh, Neil Dixon. Thank you, too.